Hello and welcome to episode 47 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is June 24th, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. So unfortunately, today Robert and Goran um, are not able to join, but I'm very excited to have Joav and Kobe with me. Um, they'll guide us through the new Azure Sentinel SAP Threat Monitoring Solution. But um, as always, let me quickly start with um, some news from this week. And actually, what I want to start with is um, a blog post that was just released two days ago. That's about um, um, NFS 3.0 support for Azure Blob Storage. Um, unfortunately, this is not yet um, uh, released or, or available for, for your SAP workload. But in general, um, if you are interested in using NFS 3.0, I think um, this new functionality with Azure Blob can be um, quite exciting because you, you don't need to set up your own NFS server and stuff like that, but you can really um, just use Azure Blob Storage and then um, enable NFS support. Um, the next thing that I want to um, take a closer look is is an, a new upcoming event. So in uh, yeah five days from now, there's an Azure hybrid and multi-cloud digital event. Um, so some of you might have seen um, the Azure Arc related sessions um, during build. I think there was a lot of um, a lot of new announcements from from Gabe um, in this session. Uh, Gabe Monroy talking about Azure Arc, how um, you can run your um, solutions in a in a multi cloud distributed um, fashion, basically not only on 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 Azure, obviously, but really also in in other environments. And for me, th this is now um, the, the the next step, basically. So we have Corey Sanders, and and there there are a few others, obviously, that um, talk about uh, or that that are speakers in in this event. And I think, um, yeah, for the the general multi cloud overview, getting um, ideas of how you can run Azure services not only in Azure but really in other um, hybrid scenarios. I think this this can be something. Um, that will be very interesting to to watch there as well. Um, then another um, training that I um, saw, uh, I, I have not watched it, and honestly, I have to admit, um, PyTorch is something that is that I'm not familiar at all. But um, I think I mentioned before, I, I really love these um, learning paths um, that Microsoft is providing there because in 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 these learning paths, in a lot of cases. You obviously also want to test and and um, try out a few scenarios. And the beautiful thing here is that you're really getting a sandbox environment, an Azure sandbox in environment that allows you to run through these tests. So um, in this learning path, and again, I have not tried it yet. I, I only watched the, the introduction video, but I thought it was really interesting. Is You get an um, introduction into PyTorch and how you can use it, how you can build your machine learning mod modules. There's a um, an image recognition um, section, um, a speech recognition section there. So um, it's it, it sounds like a very fun exercise. It's yeah four hours long. So I hope that maybe next week or um, sometimes I will be able to to run through this. But I think um, just reading through the instructions or the the introductions, I thought this could be a really um, interesting module to to learn. Now um, coming or talking about learning. There's also a nice new course on Open SAP. Um, I, I think we had talked about SAP's integration suite in in, in the past. How um, the API Business Hub obviously plays a, an important role there with all this pre-configured content. If you want to connect your Success Factor system to your S4 HANA system, and so on. Um, so I'm I'm pretty excited about this uh, this new course here. Um, the the, uh, the framework or the the pretenses that yeah, uh, there, there's um, a little deeper dive integration um, as well. So so not only an introduction about um, the um, integration suite, but but maybe really some um, additional scenarios, some new news case, new ca use cases on how to use the integration suite with different um, integration scenarios. So I think this is definitely also an open SAP course that's um, worth um, watching. Good. With this, um, 
there's one interesting blog post that I saw that um, fits perfectly to our session um, today. Um, it's about um, Microsoft's own usage of Azure um, Sentinel. And again, I'm I'm repeating myself, but but one of the beautiful things that I I really love about um, Microsoft Digital or the, the Microsoft IT department here is that they really um, talk about their experiences. They they talk about um, how they're using um, software to um, protect um, Microsoft IT, but then to also obviously um, protect our customers' investments. How we learn from um, our products. Um, again, um, Microsoft is a huge customer of SAP, so we are running SAP um, software in, in a big way. And as we've seen in, in multiple sessions before in this podcast, um, we, we all also talk about our lessons learned, how um, the uh, how, how you run and operate um, your SAP system, for example. And here with Azure Sentinel, um, and, and Joaf, maybe later on you, 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 you are probably familiar of or aware of this, but um, what, what I really liked here that um, the, the team is talking about their limitations that they had with their um, existing um, SIEM solution. So um, um, SIEM is a security information event management um, solution that there, there were some, some limits and then they worked with Azure Sentinel um, to um, yeah, leverage these functionalities. And then there's one nice quote that I had highlighted, so that it's really a back and forth. So on the one hand, Azure Sentinel really helped the team to, to improve and, and um, address their challenges. But at the same time, the experience from Microsoft um, Digital here also helped to improve the Azure Sentinel team, uh, the Azure Sentinel product, which then obviously in, in, in turn also helps other customers who are leveraging Azure Sentinel um, for protecting um, um, their their systems, their environments. So it, it's really um, um, a win-win situation, and that's really something that I very much enjoy about um, these these blog posts that really talk about Microsoft as a customer of Microsoft products or or um, of of other like SAP products, and to to really make the best out of that. So um, definitely um, a blog post worth um, reading through, I would say. Now, what triggered the the discussion today, obviously, with um, Joaf and, and and Kobe, is that Azure Sentinel um, now also has a um, SAP threat monitoring solutions or or portions of 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 this. But um, instead of me um, talking about this, um, maybe what I would like to do now is is hand over to Joaf and and Kobe, and maybe you can quickly introduce yourself. And then I'm really looking forward to um, what you have prepared and um, what you can tell us more about um, Azure Sentinel and the SAP solution. So I will start. Thank you very much, Holger. Thank you for having us here. Uh, my you. name is Yoav. Uh, I'm a, po a principal Group PM in the Azure Sentinel team. I'm Kobe. I'm also on a Sentinel. I'm a PM at Sentinel group, Product Group. And um, I think I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Just a second. Yeah, no problem. It's it's really great to have you. So, and I I, I like that both of you, the the, the authors of this uh, famous blog post. I think roughly yeah, roughly a month ago we had already talked about this. So we we saw it in the news and we 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 talked about this in the blog post. But it's then obviously always perfect if we have both the experts here on the podcast as well. Love to come back. <laughs> perfect. Yeah, I have to say that I'm very excited to present this one. Um, so excuse me if you know. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so oh, we're gonna perfect. start. That's yeah, great. we're gonna start. So hey, I'm I'm Kobe. Uh, I'm from the Microsoft uh, Sentinel product team, as I mentioned before. Uh, and together, I'm here with uh, one of my best friends, uh, Yoav, uh, which is also in the Sentinel product group. And uh, we're gonna present you uh, the new solution for. Um, for the continuous threat uh, monitoring for SAP with Sentinel. Uh, now, this is a preview solution that we just introduced recently on RSA in the middle of uh, May, a month ago. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, the product, uh, its capabilities. Uh, we're also going to talk generally about Azure Sentinel and um, the solution itself. And we're going to show you some cool demos uh, of the product. Um, so let's start with 
Sentinel Overview. Uh, Azure Sentinel is a cloud native SIM. Uh, a SIM is a system that collects logs uh, throughout the entire enterprise. Uh, your firewalls, your uh, virtual machines, your AWS, Azure, other clouds you use, um, on-prem as well, and uh, it collects it collects those logs, and it allows you to detect uh, suspicious events uh, with with within those logs. Um, also, a very uh, important point: it can correlate events throughout all the different logs that that we collect. Um, and the idea is that some low fidelity event can be correlated in high fidelity attacks. For example, uh, somebody is ex executing a suspicious activity on his endpoint, and we get this information from the endpoint protection system. Now he's creating a user in SAP and logging in into the user after creating this one. So together um, we have this channel event uh, on these multiple apps and devices that each one of them to, to that we I mean together we can identify that there, there is something suspicious over here. Uh, you can add a brute force before and or maybe a phishing a phishing email and uh, then you have the whole kill chain from initial access to the attack itself. Now Sentinel allows you to investigate those events to link the different logs together and to understand how the attack started so you can contain the attack, control it, and also provide a response. Now, a response can be manually or automated, automated response. Uh, you can apply an automation, uh, especially for security events that are more common or casual than other than others than other events. And that gives you the benefit to employ less people to deal with uh, those security events. For example, you know, sending an email for something suspicious or, uh, I don't know, block a user. Uh, you can block a user and block its permission uh, for, uh, for, some, for some actions. Uh, Microsoft Azure Sentinel is a unique solution uh, to Azure. Its uniqueness is in comparison to traditional SIM solutions. Uh, the fact that Sentinel has limitless, limitless cloud speed and scale. You can throw your data at us, and we will, you, and we are in charge to scale to scale your data. Uh, you don't need to buy any appliances or replace your existing appliances if it doesn't meet your requ uh, your request. Um, there, there's no need to increase or decrease your capacity because you know you have a limit of gigabyte you can ingest. Um, this is this is like the magic of of Sentinel that in the background we uh, we are in we are in charge for the for the uh, scaling of your of of your environment. Now uh, we have another advantage of of the Microsoft ecosystem that we provide promotion on top of that. For example, uh, the ability the abil the abil 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 ability uh, to bring Office 365 data for free. Um, we have very good integration with uh, different tools on your environment, with your uh, firewalls, with your Checkpoint, Palo Alto, F5, Cisco, virtual machines, Linux, Windows, other clouds, your orchestration tools, uh, ServiceNow and others. So you have the ability and freedom to use any tool that you want, both security and other tools that, uh, that we provide uh, third protection, and that is guided by um, AI. You can choose whatever you want, and um, you can uh, connect the the data to the the connector to um, to Sentinel. Um, one interesting point that uh, Sentinel is is a new product. Uh, it just launched a couple of years ago, and it's already um, when it's launched, it's already uh, marked as a leader according to Forrester Forrester Wave. Um, this this is the first time that Azure Sentinel is listed. Uh, in the Forrester wave, and in it on, and it's in its first time, it was listed as a leader. That is very inter interesting. Now, large enterprises all around the world are using Sentinel. Uh, one one good example of a customer is ASOS. Uh, I encourage you to read the whole case study that we did with uh, ASOS on our website, and um, you have the the story the story with, that we did with ASOS over there. Now, uh, Yoab, maybe you want to share some uh, information about how it works? 
Thank you very much, Kobe, um, and hi, everyone. So just a little bit on how the solution works and maybe show you a little bit of a generic demo of Sentinel and the dashboard so you'll get an overall context before we talk about how Azure Sentinel uh, protects uh, SAP systems. So Azure Sentinel collects uh, the data from all your different sources, from your security solutions, from public clouds, including other clouds like AWS, it collects uh, the data from applications and your infrastructure, uh, virtual machine networks and so on, and also SAP, of course. And uh, it uh, uh, also collects the data from the Microsoft services, which is all put into a data repository that we call a workspace. And then it provides uh, tools that allow you to leverage the data. You can visualize the data with dashboards. You can uh, apply machine learning techniques and uh, user uh, um, behavioral uh, analytics in order to analyze the behavior of users and detect anomalies uh, in the environment. You can investigate uh, the different events and connect the different log files all together. For example, the IP field is uh, maybe a different field in each log, but we know that this is the same, uh, the, 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 that this field means IP, and we know that this entity IP now appears in two places and we know how to connect the different data sources automatically for you and allow you to investigate, control the blast radius of, of a breach, uh, uh, contain it and respond to it by invoking automated response playbooks that are integrated to your entire environment. Uh, one example here on the slide is, uh, is ServiceNow. Um, just showing you a, um, really a, a short, uh, a really quick kind of a snippet overview of uh, Sentinel. So this is the Azure uh, uh, Sentinel uh, uh, user interface. And you can see, we can see how much data is ingested uh, over time. And we can see the different alerts on the red and also the location where alerts were found and the recent incidents. Incidents incident are actually um, uh, uh, situations where your security team need to respond to. Those, those are actually security incidents. Unlike alerts, where sometimes one alert does not mean uh, uh, that your security team need to do something, but altogether when we have a couple of alerts together or something that has high fidelity, that will become an, an incident on the system. When you first install Azure Sentinel, you connect the different data sources, what we call the data connectors. And we have really a multitude of data connectors for virtually anything, and it's uh, each one of them is uh, uh, you can click and uh, see if it's connected or not, and also uh, uh, configure and connect it to your data sources. After the data sources are connected, then you can pick and choose analytics from uh, templates that we provide. Analytics are queries that run on the data. Essentially, the data is kept in a database. A Custo database, which is a unique technology by Microsoft, a very super fast database for searching in logs. And that uh, 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 queries uh, uh, can, are editable. You can see exactly uh, uh, what's in the query. Uh, you can modify it. You can create your own by uh, applying, uh, uh, creating new uh, rules. And uh, you can decide which one of them we want to enable in your environment. Sometimes if there is a campaign of attacks, we immediately uh, we, we are uh, pushing additional templates for uh, those uh, campaigns. Uh, an example of that would be Zod and, and others uh, as well. Uh, another uh, capability of uh, Azure Sentinel is the incidents. Whenever there is an incident, then we uh, can uh, view the incident. We can assign it uh, to a person uh, that will take care of it. Uh, we can assign the status for it, uh, the severity of it, and we can also take actions. We can uh, decide to create an automation rule for the incident. We can investigate the incident or even create a Teams uh, channel for that incident where the, the security operation team will collaborate and work together where everything is logged and the entire investigation process is, is streamlined in a very efficient, uh, efficient uh, 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 manner. It's an example of all kinds of alerts from around uh, uh, the system. Now I'll show you another demo of, uh, of uh, the SAP portion, but now let's talk a bit about what is uh, uh, Sentinel uh, SAP threat monitoring, what is included with it, how it works, and then go through uh, a short demo and relevant resources for you to try it yourself. Kobe, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Yoav. Um, I'm going to share my screen again. Uh, here it is. Um, Great, so 
we are proud to introduce you to the new innovative solution, which is part of Azure Sentinel uh, for monitoring SAP systems. Now, when it comes to uh, SAP systems, we know that a breach to such a system can result in a catastrophe. Stolen files, sensitive data, the disruptions of production, uh, production operations and the supply chain itself. In addition, wiring funds of all of all kinds of entities as SAP is often the main financial system of a company. Now, once an attacker has access to SAP system, it is very difficult to know to know to know that the attacker is inside the system and very difficult to stop that. It is also I'm, I want to mention again that it is also very important to correlate activities from other SAP systems um, to other from other system from other system in your environment uh, because there are so many activities in the in SAP that could be suspicious, but we don't know that. Only when we gather other events from the company, from the company firewalls, from the from the VMs, from the endpoint uh, protection. When we do all that, we do all that in order to confidence that um, what you experience is actually a breach and we give you the ability to control the attack. This is why the SIM is a perfect place to protect your SAP systems. In addition to that, um, because SAP is a unique solution, often when our security operation teams talk with our, with, our, with our customers, they tell us that they, they, that ha that they have very little visibility to SAP systems. And often the SAP teams themselves have very little visibility uh, or tools that they can um, that they are appropriate or that they can work with uh, for dealing with such uh, with such threats or attacks. Um, so uh, we want to introduce you the the new solution uh, SAP Threat Monitoring for Azure Sentinel, which will continuously monitor your systems all across the different layers. It will monitor your operating system layers, uh, Linux, wi uh, Windows, and so on. It will monitor your databases if you have HANADB or SQL. It will, in addition, it will monitor your business logic of the SAP application. And for that, it will use the NetWeaver interface, uh, and it will use your S SAP control interface to get deep applic applicative data for your SAP system. Then it will allow you to detect, as you have mentioned before, it will allow you to detect threats across your SAP environment, uh, all kinds of threats. Actually, in our solution, there are more than 50 predefined detections that you can uh, use once you deploy the solution. And we are keep on working and adding new detection. Uh, of course, you can create your own specific rules uh, very easily. Uh, within Azure Sentinel and in the demo that we'll show you in a minute, you're going to see how. Um, how it works, how it, how the how the solution works. Um, let's talk about that. In order to get the data from SAP, we need to unlock the data first by installing an add-on to SAP. Uh, it, called, uh, it, it is a change request and providing a user for our connector to connect to. Then, when we have a user that can connect with uh, that can connect to the system, and the SAP system is ready, um, we install a Docker uh, data connect over here. You can see it over here. The 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 Docker is is, is typically installed by a Linux VM, but you can also also use a Kubernetes or other orchestration tools to run the Docker container. Whatever you whatever you feel comfortable with, um, it will connect using uh, SAP RFC remote function calls, uh, NetWeaver calls to SAP, and also using the SOAP protocol using SAP control and and it will stream the data back to Azure Sentinel. Now you can keep your regarding the credentials. You can keep the credentials in uh, Azure Key Vault. Uh, that's the default of the system in order to increase the security. The security posture of the solution, um, but you can you can again as I mentioned before you can choose uh, whatever tool you feel comfortable with to work with. Uh, the default is Azure Key Vault, and in terms of uh, the logs that we deliver uh, over here, you can see them. Um, they are virtually representing 
everything that happens in your SAP system. For example, let's take the first one, the ABAP security audit log. Um, it contains all the security events, logical changes in your system, and we get and we get those events into Sentinel. We can track those events. Um, another example is the spool log. The spool log provides information about reports that are generated in the system. The spool output log uh, provides data and logs. Uh, provides the um, provides all the the data about printing those logs, the spool log, the spool log, from the spool logs, and cre and creating PDFs. So that's important as well. Another example is the job log. The job log provides data and logs about background jobs that are being executed in the background, and of course anomalies uh, regarding that. Um, in addition, one last example. Let's take the okay. Let's take the DB table data, um, which provides a visibility to changes in the in the database, and um, we have more and more logs. Um, we have 14 different logs, and and also HANA DB, and, and we all, all and, sorry, and we also have a syslog based integration with HANA DB uh, in order to monitor that. Uh, all of the, all of the, all all of those logs are um are connected when in this in the in the solution uh when when you enable that one um we talked we talked about uh how sap correlates with other resources uh, in sentinel uh cross correlation we have uh, uh different dbs that we that we can connect to uh virtual machines firewalls uh of course, Microsoft tools, Microsoft Azure and Microsoft 365. Uh, we gathered events from all of those sources that from all of all, from all of those all of those data sources and together we can identify an attack um, together with the SAP events that we collect as well. Um, I, I want to talk about uh, ex uh, detection example of detection coverage. You have maybe you want to you want to talk about that? Thank you, Kobe. Um, so a little bit about detection coverage. First, it's important for me to add that the solution works not only in Azure, but also in other clouds, in AWS and GCP and, uh, and naturally on-prem. So you can integrate your on-prem systems today uh, and of course also uh, uh, decide later on to migrate uh, uh, those systems to, uh, uh, to Azure and protect your entire estate uh, immediately. You do not have to limit yourself in any way. In terms of the uh, detection coverage, a couple of examples and scenarios that are included with out-of-the-box detections that are provided with the tool. Uh, we detect suspicious privilege operations like creating privileged users, using uh, break glass users like uh, DDIC or uh, assigning uh, sensitive roles, trying to bypass security mechanisms in SAP like uh, trying to disable the audit logging or executing a sensitive function or um, uh, trying to change the system configuration, creating backdoors like uh, internet facing services or accessing sensitive tables by remote function called data exfiltration, like uh, multiple down, uh, download of files or trying to print somebody else's spool, uh, allowing access to insecure FTP servers and uh, also uh, everything around the initial access, brute forcing, uh, attacks or logging in from unexpected network. If you have a network that is supposed to maintain SAP, then connectivity with the privileged user outside that network may also raise an alert. And it is also important to say that all those detections, they also come with a set of configurations that you can configure using a mechanism in a Sentinel called the watch list. So you can fine grain uh, uh, the solution for your environment. I will give you another uh, one example of that. If you have a, a development system, you may want to debug on that system and that should not raise an alert. Mm -hmm. However, if you run a production system and somebody is debugging over there, maybe that's a security issue that needs additional attention from your team. And that's why we provide the, the ability to configure your systems and tell us which system is what and what would be the roles uh, uh, of each one's of uh, of the systems so i want to go to the demo but can you also switch to the uh, next slide before that um and, and more and more and more like uh, i i, I yeah, will sure. show them a live demo yeah, yeah. and go over oh, the screenshot so 
as a call for action, of course you can learn more about our solution in aka.ms slash sentinel for SAP. You can get the direct link to the documentation. I will also go through the documentation a little bit with you during the time we have on the session to kind of get to understand the process of installation because this is an SAP. Uh, uh, once you want to integrate to an SAP system, it does require some preparation uh, on the SAP side of the house as well. So let's go and uh, uh, um, look at the thing itself. So here I have a Sentinel a workspace uh, that, uh, uh, that is configured with SAP. I can see my recent incidents like before, and um, you can see the data connector for SAP. I can just look for it uh, among the other data connectors that I have, and we can see that the status of the connector is connected, and we can see the different analytics that we pick and choose for, uh, for our environment. Um, let me help you see this in a larger way. We can see the severity of the cases and the different uh, analytics that are uh, included. Uh, we can see exactly how uh, the analytics uh, look like. Uh, let me choose an easy example. I don't know, maybe take the debugging activities one. Um, and here we can actually see uh, the exact query that is run. Uh, we can edit. Uh, we can edit this. And of course, we can create also a new one. Uh, let's do an edit. And we can see uh, the rule logic, which eventually uh, has a list of systems and which one is production and which one is not. And this is a configurable from a watch list. I will show you how it looks like. It's easy to configure the list of your systems. And uh, we can see that it's looking at the audit log and what kind of audit classes are being looked for. And you can really see exactly how the magic is done. And you can change it and you can create your own. We also map uh, the different entities in the logs, for example, the account, the host, the IP. So if we encounter the same account or the same IP or the same host in another log, say a firewall log, then we know how to connect uh, the dots all together during the uh, investigation process. Uh, like I said, there is uh, what we call watch list, which is the configuration mechanism for, uh, for all the detections, where we can define the sensitive roles, the list of systems, the list of networks, the critical authorizations that we want to uh, have a specific uh, alert for, um, and, and so on and so forth. For, uh, so, so the alerts are, or the detections are configurable uh, in there. Uh, let's uh, take uh, uh, the systems example, then we can edit the watch list, and we can see the different systems that we have in the environment, which one is training, which one is production. Um, and, and of course, this helps you fine grain uh, the detections and reduce unnecessary noise uh, for your uh, security team. Now, um, what I uh, did not say, and that's also important to mention before we show additional uh, areas, is that in order to install the solution, you can use the new solutions uh, area in uh, Sentinel. You click solutions, you pick SAP, and uh, you can install the SAP content. It will install all the security content, the workbook, the analytics for you on the environment and also the uh, connector. In order to actually run the connector, you will need to install a VM and run the connector on a VM and I'll go over the steps for it. Uh, but the content is really a couple of clicks away from having all the security content ready in your environment. Looking at, uh, 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 at the logs, so you can we see the different SAP logs currently represented as custom logs. I can double click, for example, the audit log. I can run a query and see how this log, uh, log looks like. Okay, you can see the different fields. And I can, uh, for example, let's, uh, uh, let's summarize uh, by uh, user and see, for example, which kind of users are logging in. And of course, I can easily create an alert from this query that if there is more than X amount of users, it will alert. Okay, if I try to create a new alert, like Kobe promised that I will do, let's say this alert is not the most useful one, but it's an example. Then I can uh, create a new analytic rule, a scheduled query rule, and I can go to the rule log logic. I can put it here and count the number of uh, users. Uh, I can test it with the data, I can see how many users are there, and I can decide to create a threshold. For example, over five users, uh, I will want to alert. And you can see the bar of how, how, my, how many alerts I will actually get in this uh, simulation. So you can really also create your own rules easily by querying the data using the KQA language, which is very extensive and very easy to learn and use. And we can also provide the resources uh, as part of uh, uh, this looking for Azure Sentinel Ninja 
uh, in your search engine. We'll also bring you to a training that includes KQL training and everything around how to write those queries also yourself. We also provide visualization, a workbook, um, and here I can pick the uh, workbook for SAP. In the workbook, you can see uh, indication of the system health that we're actually getting data uh, from the system. Uh, you can browse through the entire events over the audit log um, uh, and, and, and by their severity. Um, and uh, you can also choose which systems you want to monitor. You can monitor one, monitor one system or two, all of them, or, or 10, whatever, how many systems you would have, and aggregate the data all together. And also review the authentication, authorization related things like audit configuration changes, suspicious changes to users, all kinds of uh, suspicious changes in the system, like creating users and changing the records and the uh, password changes. So that will give you a, a way to investigate, to act to proactively investigate what's going on in the system. This is just the first workbook that we have delivered. We plan to deliver additional uh, security content. In the incident uh, tab, you can see incidents that are related to, uh, to SAP. And of course, you can also uh, uh, investigate it. Uh, I can click on the sensitive user logged in incident, for example, investigate that incident. I can see which uh, machine was logged in and I can see related alert to that host. Maybe there are additional things that happened for this IP, and I can see the different alerts uh, that got detected. And of course, I can elaborate on them, and I can uh, uh, view the different entities that are related to each one of, uh, of the alerts, and really drill down into details that we collect on the IPs, on the entities, on the users for multiple systems. So, okay, I mean, it's not just the SAP system that provides the data uh, over here. Uh, like I said, you can assign the ticket to someone, uh, you can open a team channel to investigate uh, the ticket, and if you look at the full view, full uh, details, you can see entities that are related to it. You can, of course, drill down through the IP or through the host as the uh, different entities uh, that are associated with uh, this uh, incident, and here we can see on a timeline everything that happened to this host. So you have all the tools to really understand what happened in the system, and you can also execute automation from here to create an automation rule, which automatically do something like block the user, for example, uh, or you can run a playbook and there is um, really a, a, a whole gallery of uh, playbooks that you can run uh, that we provide together with the solution and they are uh, listed under the automation tab. You can see all our playbooks and, uh, and of course you can read the uh, 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 a lot of them are coming from the community. I'll show you a bit of our community, and you can see exactly what they do and how to, to create a, a playbook. Uh, just opening one example, a playbook is eventually a logic app, and, and it's easy to create it because it does not require actual coding. It is a kind of a visual no-code solution, uh, which you can create conditions and access and interact with users, chat with them over Teams or Slack ask for permission, for example, from the SAP basis team if somebody is logging in with the DDQ user or create your own automation around any, uh, any alert. So it's possible to create those automations and, uh, uh, and it is possible to investigate, to view the incidents, to query the logs and so on and so forth. A little bit on the, on the installation process. So first, uh, you can you can see our blog, like uh, Holger uh, already uh, mentioned in the beginning. And if you, uh, by the way, click through the log, you'd have the uh, SAP threat monitoring documentation link here. And for the documentation, we have a few different areas. Uh, you can see the workbook, the rules and watch list and all the security content, what is actually provided uh, out of the box. And of course, you can build your own. You can see the list of logs that we provide and how we uh, extract each one of those logs and what will be the exact schema uh, of, uh, that we provide for the logs, how to deploy uh, the SAP Data Connector on-premises or in, in locations that are outside of Azure, and of course the deployment requirements, the machine sizing, the virtual machine sizing that is recommended, uh, the fact that you need to install change request in order to unlock all of the logs. It's also possible not to install change request and then you'll get the audit log, but if you want to un unlock all the data, you need to install a change request. And in order to unlock some of the files uh, of the logs, you will need to install those change requests. They are, by the way, it's very common that you do not in need to install any note from SAP uh, because uh, uh, those notes usually already applied on your system from, let's say, I would even say a couple of years away. 
but in some cases you have we encounter the customers are missing those nodes and we provide exactly a guidance of which nodes to install uh, on which uh, on which versions if if needed at all also there is a, a list of authorizations that are required and we also provide a transport to automatically create the authorization the role for the user who will be connecting to sap so let's have a look at the process of deploying it in azure uh, then you would need to prepare the sap system you would need to uh, install the connector on a vm or potentially uh, uh, on orchestration system and you can see all the different uh, uh, prerequisites you need to of course have connectivity from the vm uh, that that is used as a connector to sap and back and forth to Azure Sentinel. Uh, you would need to have a, a, sub, a, a subsystem. You can have a lower version than 7.5, and uh, in some cases, customers installed a lower version than 7.4. Um, given that you review the list of nodes that are required for older versions and uh, install the corresponding change request for 7.4 or 7.5 or 7 uh, SAP basis systems, you would need to create the SAP user. And, uh, uh, and eventually for the installation, you would need all the details. And that means to install it, there is a cooperation uh, in many cases between the SAP people, the SAP experts, the basis team, together with the security team. Then you need the SAP IP address, the system number, the NetWeaver uh, 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 system ID, the client ID, and of course the username and password, and also the log analytics, uh, the Sentinel workspace details in order to push the data uh, back to, uh, uh, to Sentinel. So once you uh, start the process, there is elaborate explanation of how to configure the SAP system, uh, installing uh, the new role by importing it, uh, and uh, also installing the, uh, the change request. Then as the last step that is uh, SAP related, after you have the user and the role and the change request applied, you need to uh, download from SAP the NetWeaver RFC SDK. It is an open download for users who have uh, access to the SAP Launchpad. And you need to place this zip file that you download, the Linux SDK, on the VM. This is required in order for us to leverage this SDK and connect with it to SAP. It is provided by SAP uh, as a service in the website. Then you deploy a Linux VM. You can use Ubuntu or Red Hat or, uh, or SUSE. Create a key vault, and that key vault will be granted with privileges from uh, using the system managed identity of the virtual machine that is running the connector. Again, the connector is installed on its own virtual machine. It does not take resources from your SAP server. Uh, after that, you need to deploy the connector itself, and that is by running a command that download a script that we call, what we call a kickstart script, and then it will just ask you a couple of questions like, uh, uh, what is your what is the name of the uh, what is the IP of the instance? What is the name of the uh, what is your seed client ID? The passwords, a couple of questions, and after that, it will uh, install, and you'll get a notice that the installation process uh, was completed. Then you'll be able to uh, to see with Docker PS, you'll be able to see all the containers that run on the system. In this case, I have a container for the A4H seed. Each con each each container has a name. And the name includes the name of the uh, uh, the system ID of the SAP system it connects into. Uh, I can stop uh, uh, the connector from running by using Docker stop. All of this is also in the documentation, all those shortcuts. And the Docker is installed automatically for you, including all the OS prerequisites with the script. Then you can start the connector. I can view the logs. The connector. No, sorry. And we can see the connector has started. Uh, it is uh, read the secrets for my uh, system. It connected to my ABAP system. And then it will start downloading the data. You can see examples from before. Uh, it will just run and collect more and more uh, logs continuously from your system. It will also keep a timestamp of the data. There is a configuration file. It's also in the documentation that you can enable or disable certain logs. You do not have to, uh, to connect to all of the different uh, logs. You can pick and choose. And also there are capabilities to create, uh, to fine grain what kind of events you actually want to monitor on the SAP side. There's a lot of control from your end 
on what kind of data will, will be received. And once this is carried, um, the connector will simply continue and collect information from, from SAP, put it back to Sentinel for the for security auditing, for security monitoring, and 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 you're uh, you're good to go uh, with the connector component. After you finished with the connector component, then you can install the SAP security content from the solutions uh, gallery here. You choose the SAP solution. You choose the migration target where, where you want to actually uh, sorry uh, install the solution on. Um, I have a Okay, you do create. You pick the Azure Sentinel workspace. Uh, it takes uh, minutes to create a workspace, uh, and uh, you can you can you, you uh, after you do that, uh, you can see the different things that are going to be deployed: the workbook, the list of analytics that are going to be deployed, and in the end, review and create will create all the security content for you. So, Kobe, uh, back to you. Let's uh, let's have uh, uh, our call for uh, for action. Yes, I'm, yes, gonna, I'm gonna, present gonna present again. again. And, uh, and uh, here it is. Here it is. Again. Again. And, and Olga, if Olga, you have, you have any questions, questions and we want to talk, talk about, about something. something. Yes, I, I, I do have a few questions. Um, so, so first, uh, I mean, thank you. This looks really, really fantastic. And um, I think what you mentioned in the beginning is we have now this possibility to correlate um, different things, events that are happening in the SAP system, that we can correlate these events to things that are happening, I guess, in Azure Active Directory, for example, or in Office 365. I think that is really something that is immensely powerful that um, you something that might look very um, harmless in the SAP system. If you correlate this with another activity um, that happens in Azure Active Directory or in, in Office 365, for example, I think that that is something that is extremely powerful. Yeah, and yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you because this is one of the strength that uh, that we have for Sentinel, the the, the correlation that we can have from other sources, uh, especially for micro for, for Microsoft uh, tools. You know, as as you said, uh, micro, uh, Azure 365 or Active Directory. Uh, that's the the strength that we have here. Cool. Yeah, that, that's really amazing. Now, yeah, when we when, when we approached of, to build the solution, we we came to the conclusion that the SIM would be the perfect place to to monitor. Uh, something like like SAP. That will be the the right uh, kind of system that should uh, that should do this uh, heavy lifting. Cool. So, Jaf, uh, when when you when you showed the connection to the SAP system where you installed the, the Docker container, um, is is there always a one to one relationship? So, if I have um ten uh, SAP systems, I would have ten. Docker containers um, are probably running, I guess, even on the same virtual machine, but I would have this this one to one relationship to my SAP systems, right? Yes, this is this is uh, currently how it's, provi uh, it's provided. We are considering uh, creating a, a nice orchestration uh, platform around it, but in in you need to have a Docker per system, uh, and 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 it's very easy to manage to to list the Docker's, to stop, to start, and to change their configurations. Uh, and you can run multiple connectors on the same VM. There are also some sizing guidelines on, on the documentation. Okay. And then this, this also means that um, the Docker container needs to be in the same network, I guess, as my SAP system. So that um, really this connection, I think you mentioned um, via RFCs um, and via SOAP um, can happen. So, so it needs to be in the same network somehow. That's one of the reasons we chose a, a Docker container uh, yep. delivery vehicle because on one hand it's it's easy to install and kinds yep. of uh, meets all the prerequisites of the environment are part of the Docker itself, uh, and on the other hand you have the flexibility to install it everywhere on the network. And because SAP is such a, a sensitive workload, we wanted to give our customers the freedom to place the connector really close to the SAP system mm -hmm. network wise, maintain their network isolation. And, and only open the ports from there to, to Azure Sentinel as if they wish for, do not have to open ports from a, any other network to SAP yeah. or anything like that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. No, that, that's really great. So the communication is then that the Docker container connects to the SAP system, retrieves 
um, the relevant blocks, and then it pushes these logs information into Azure Sentinel. That's right. Cool. And then one, one last thing, what I also really loved was this huge list of um, of solutions that you're providing. So pre-configured alerts um, or pre-configured um, monitoring things that I can immediately get started with. I, I think in one of your, your samples, you showed that you were excluding or maybe including certain SITs, but, but I guess this is a perfect template for me to get started and then I can adjust. I can um, go through these lists. I can um, use this as a template to really um, make it um, fitting to my SAP systems that I have um, running. So, but but the, this huge list is is a, a fantastic starting point, I guess, um, for yeah, customers. Yeah. Yes, and the configurations that are provided are uh, the prov we are providing uh, defaults that are that are pretty good to our opinion. I mean, like sensitive roles that you should be monitoring or functions that that are sensitive and the executions of those fu functions should should raise a flag or, or, or at least you know be something that you can uh, you should consider. So you can really get started very quickly. Mm -hmm. But we understand the customized nature of SAP systems. We wanted to give an easy way to customize the rules, even without knowing how to write uh, the queries. Of course, knowing how to write queries uh, makes it that the sky is the limit when it comes to uh, to, to the, the unlimited options that you have uh, to, to leverage the data. But still, we understand Time to value is is also something important for everyone, and we have little time, and we want to get a lot of value. And built-in content is the way to 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 make it happen. Yeah, and I'm gonna add that that's that's why we 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 keep on we keep on uh, adding more uh, analytics and more detections to to the solution. Uh, the list that you saw is just uh, just the beginning, and just we're gonna the beginning. And, yeah, and we, we're working on more. <laughs> cool. No, that, yeah. that's really amazing. That's really amazing. I think, um, I mean, since you are showing this this page right now, I think it's it's definitely worth for everyone to give it a try. And I, I think we saw how easy it is to get to get started to to set it up. I, I think it's it's definitely worth. And also the interesting thing, it's it's not only if I run my SAP systems on Azure, even if I have my SAP system still on premise, or as you said, if I run my SAP system on AWS. Yeah. And then I could still use this functionality to to monitor the SAP system and correlate it. And I think that that's again for me the the, the huge benefit. I mean, monitoring an SAP system is is one thing, but to be able to correlate the information from the SAP system with all the other telemetry and signals that we are getting from yeah from Office 365 from Azure Active Directory, I think that that's really for me one of the the the, the amazing strength here. Cool. So I, th I think that, uh, that that that's 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 true. And generally, when we talk about a sim, a sim has to to work across the entire enterprise. Mm -hmm. Many of our customers they run multiple clouds. Uh, they they have s solutions on prem. Sentinel covers on prem and cloud by definition. Right. The tool is by yep. definition cross uh, cross enterprise. There are advantages for running uh, uh, SAP on Azure. For example, the easy use of uh, of managed identities for the key vault access. It, yep. it makes things easier uh, in in many senses because the Sentinel infrastructure is is on Azure. But yet again, you get great coverage um, uh, on prem and and ensure that uh, that that your entire estate is is protected. Fantastic. Oh, that, that's that's really great. That that's really happy, and I, I'm I I definitely know that I also need to test this with with one of my SAP systems that I have running on Azure. So I'll I'll definitely go through the steps. Thank take you. action! Thank take you. action today, Holger. Today. <laughs> I, uh, let, let's see. Let's see if I have time to do this. But, but um, I, I'll definitely give it a try. We are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, great. Thank Thanks. you very much. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you very much for um, for joining. Thanks for, for this fantastic presentation, Kobe, for, for, for the demos. I, I think that was, that was really, really great. And yeah, maybe I'll see you again once you are GA or when, when you have some, some new uh, additional functionalities. I would be more than happy to, to have you on the podcast again. Th thank you very much. And we'll be more than happy to, to join again and to showcase the new stuff that, that we are planning now and and but once it gets delivered. Cool. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Have a nice day you? and talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.